Hello, I'm State Senator Edna Brown from Toledo. Welcome to Ohio In Focus. Hello and welcome to Ohio In Focus, the program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Mike Rao. Today's guest is Senator Edna Brown. She represents Toledo and the 11th Senate District. Senator Brown also serves as the Assistant Minority Whip. Senator Brown, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation. Now we're going to discuss some legislative issues, but before we get into that, I want to just talk a little bit about your background and, and how you got involved in public service. Where did it start? Well, actually, it started almost the day I started uh, employment, Mike. Uh, I was a public employee for 32 years for the city of Toledo, and in my positions, I always worked with the public. I was always, it seemed, uh, answering questions or trying to get answers for people. And then once I retired, I just kind of segued my way into uh, public office was not planned. It was quite unexpected to run for office, and fortunately, I was elected. Uh, I was quite active with the union, as most people know, and it was my union brothers and sisters who urged me to run for city council there in Toledo. So that's kind of how I got started in politics. So that experience that you had uh, being a public employee, how does that help you in your, your job now as a state senator? Well, actually, it's just a, a continuation of what I did previously. Uh, on the local level, it's somewhat uh, different. Uh, even though you legislate, uh, we didn't really uh, author too many bills or what have you. It was primarily what the administration sent to us. Uh, but uh, I, I found that to be a very, very <coughs> good training ground in having to uh, work with outside entities and then working with other legislators with whose agenda might not always be the same as your own. Yeah, that's true. Let's talk about some of the issues that you're working on here in the General Assembly. One of them is Senate Bill 270, which would uh, abolish the death penalty in Ohio. This is an issue you feel pretty strongly about. How did you get interested in, in trying to pursue legislation like this? Uh, uh, Mike, I, I suppose it's something that I have always had strong feelings about, uh, primarily because of, of my Christian upbringing, my religious beliefs. But it just in recent times, there seemed to be such controversy uh, uh, surrounding uh, some of the cases across the country. And I'm sad, and just before we came here into the studio, uh, uh, we did get breaking news that uh, the young man was just executed here in Ohio, the, the most recent one. So uh, uh, again, that, that just kind of solidified my belief, because there are some issues uh, in, involving his mental capacity there. Um, I strongly feel that in a moral society such as what we have here, uh, that we should not be taking the life of another that life in prison without the possibility of parole would be a far better punishment than for us to put someone to death. This is obviously one of these issues where they have strong opinions on both sides. Do you see a trend in this country maybe toward abolishing the death penalty or what are, what's happening in other states? Is there is there some trend going on? Absolutely, there is indeed. Just last week, we had another one of our neighbors, uh, neighbor states uh, abolish the uh, death penalty, uh, and uh, uh, there are other states who have. And, and I, I think that people are starting to take a serious look at the penalty. It, it has been proven that it's not a deterrent that it, it does not uh, result in, in fewer uh, murders. And, and so people are starting to look at that. And, and it's very, very expensive uh, to keep a person on death row. Uh, so I think that people are starting to look at it and realize that perhaps there is a better way. 
Let's segue into another issue that's, that's really gotten a lot of attention in the General Assembly um, and you've spoken about, and that's voting rights. There's been a number of bills go through the legislature, 194, which changed election uh, rules last year. Um, that was then subject to referendum. That may or may not happen now. Um, what do you think about what the General Assembly seems to be trying to do when it comes to voting? My honest opinion, the General Assembly, uh, some members of the General Assembly, mm -hmm. let's put it that way, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think this is a partisan, very, very partisan issue. And my honest opinion is much of what is being done is to uh, try to influence the turnout mm -hmm. at the November election, and that is to defeat the current president. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it, it's, I, I don't know how to, to phrase it, to, to think that people would go this far to disenfranchise mm -hmm. so many people, to try to find a way to keep people from having the opportunity to vote, and now to come along and try to challenge whether provisional ballots will be counted or not. How far will we go? Mm -hmm. Let the people decide. Don't try to make the decision for them by deciding who will vote and how many will vote. Uh, uh, this thing has gone far enough. I think we need to concentrate on the issues that are affecting the citizens of this state. And, and concentrate on trying to create some jobs, trying to do some things that are much needed, rather than trying to find a way to defeat the president. You mentioned giving people an opportunity to vote. Um, you uh, un uh, support the idea of voting on a referendum for 194, right? Because there was a vote in the Senate here recently that uh, would block that. Why do you think the citizens should have a chance to, to vote? They have a constitutional right to do it. Mm -hmm. And once the issue was put on the ballot, once it was certified for the ballot, then I don't think the legislature has the right to take that right away. They should have done it before it went to the ballot. There was an opportunity to correct that wrong before it went to the ballot. But once it was certified to the ballot, then I think the people need a right, has a right to vote on it. And, and that's why I say, nope, don't let them take it off. And I think that they're afraid. Look what happened to SB 5, yeah. issue 2. <laughs> exactly. Um, another area of interest for you is um, consumer protection, consumer issues. Uh, another bill that came through the Senate recently is this idea of right to cure. You spoke on the floor against this. Why, why uh, do you not like this? Because there is a right to cure without us legislating it. Mm -hmm. Honest businesses, businessmen, businesswomen, whomever, they have a right to cure from day one by treating people fairly mm -hmm. and honoring warranties and guarantees and what have you, rather than forcing people to go to court. There should be no reason for us to have to legislate and say, you have a right <clears throat> to make me an offer, and I either accept that offer or take my chances. You as a good businessman should cure the problem mm -hmm. without me having to go to court. That's why I was opposed to it. Okay. Well, those are the questions I had. I thank you for joining us here on Ohio In Focus. We'll have to have you back again. Thank you. I enjoyed it. All right. Thanks. You can follow Senator Brown and the rest of the Ohio Senate Democratic Caucus on Facebook and at ohiosenatedems.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching Ohio In Focus.